It's June 23rd here in Seoul, and I'm Kim Dami. We begin with these stories making the headlines at this hour, starting with the South Korean leader's state visit to Vietnam. President Yoon Suk-yeol spent his first day in Hanoi focusing on culture and the economy. He'll hold summit talks with his Vietnamese counterparts on ways to deepen the scope of the South Korea-Vietnam partnership. U.S. President Joe Biden plays down his comments, calling Chinese President Xi Jinping a dictator, saying it has not complicated Washington-Beijing relations. He also still expects to meet with Xi. All five passengers on the missing Titan submersible are feared dead after debris from the vessel is found near the Titanic's wreckage. It's a day two of President Yoon suk yeols visit to Vietnam. It's an official state visit. Well, he'll be sitting down for a summit with President Vo Van Tong and promoting business ties. Our Oh Soo Young starts us off. The air is thick in Hanoi, not just with humidity, but with anticipation, as President Yoon suk yeols three-day trip draws great media attention here in Vietnam. This is the leader's first state visit to a country in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Yun hit the ground running when he landed Thursday, setting out to strengthen bilateral ties which were elevated to a comprehensive strategic partnership just half a year ago. Noting that Vietnam hosts the largest number of South Korean nationals among ASEAN countries, Yun spoke to 300 Korean residents in Hanoi, emphasizing their role in bridging South Korea-Vietnam ties, which were formally established in 1992. 자유 평화 번영의 인도 태평양을 갖고 나가는 데 있어 베트남은 우리 대한민국의 핵심 협력국입니다. 지난해 수교 30주년을 맞기까지 양국 관계는 눈부신 발전을 거듭해 왔습니다. Over three decades, bilateral trades increased 175-fold, with Vietnam being South Korea's third largest trading partner, according to the presidential office. Korea is the largest foreign investor in Vietnam, which is home to manufacturing plants of Samsung, LG and Hyundai Motor. The president is also travelling with his largest ever business delegation of 205 corporate leaders, including the heads of Samsung, LG, SK, Hyundai and Lotte, with four economic events on Yoon's schedule. This visit is also meaningful as around 10 agreements and MOUs will be signed to give institutional support to enable even more vibrant economic activities between the two sides. But looking beyond economic relations, the president said his visit will be the starting point for the next 30 years of bilateral relations. Yun and Vietnamese President Vo Van Tuong will have a summit on Friday, with the two not only expected to deepen business ties, but also broaden the scope of their partnership. Ahead of his trip, the South Korean leader told Vietnamese media that Ho hopes to collaborate particularly in the fields of core mineral supply chains, energy, digital transformation, smart cities and climate action. He also pushed for cooperation in defence technology and maritime security, calling for a rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific region. Yun has also expressed hope to further South Korea's ties with the ASEAN bloc as a whole, with Vietnam as the gateway. Following his summit, Yun will hold separate meetings with Vietnam's top politicians, including the General Secretary of the ruling Communist Party, Nhang Phu Trang, Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin, and National Assembly Chair Vong Ding Hui before attending a state dinner. Oh Siong Airang News, Hanoi. And President Yun spent much of his first day in Hanoi promoting business and cultural exchanges between the two countries. There, he once again saw Vietnam as a hub full of opportunities and vibrance. Kim do reports. President Yun song yeol touted Vietnam's economic potential and showed his support for Vietnamese businesses looking to enter the South Korean market. The president also underscored the importance of the next generation while at the Korea-Vietnam Partnership Fair held at a convention center in Hanoi on Thursday. Vietnam is a strong population and a strong population of young people and a strong population of young people. Vietnam is a this event was arranged by the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy and included a K-Industry Showcase section showcasing products from major Korean companies, 
a young tech startup grand challenge section to discover young entrepreneurs in the ASEAN region to start a business in South Korea, as well as an area providing consultation to businesses looking to enter the South Korean market. According to the top office, some 1,700 people attended the event. Also at the K-Food Festival stand where Korean food was on show along with Korean Vietnamese fusion menus, Yoon chatted with Vietnamese youth and tried kimchi banh mi. President Yoon also attended a separate culture exchange event at the same venue later. There, Vietnamese Vice President Vo Thi An Chuan joined as well as K-pop groups Monster X and AB6. AB6 performed its song Loser with a Vietnamese K-pop dance crew. Vietnamese pop singer Min also drew a crowd by singing Korean singer IU's My Old Story in Korean. In the meantime, President Yoon hosted a dinner for his 205-strong traveling business delegation to promote South Korea-Vietnam exchanges further. With Samsung Electronics Chairman Lee Jae-yong and other big names attending the event, he called on businesses to look for opportunities in Vietnam. Global Saying a new opportunity is opening up for South Korea as it is a tight link to Vietnam compared to other nations, Yoon called on businesses to take the lead and vowed to provide support. Kim do Arirang News. Staying in Vietnam, hopes are high in the Southeast Asian country where economic cooperation and more fruitful opportunities are expected for South Korea and its third biggest trading partner. To discuss on today's On Point, we're joined by Mr. Choi Good morning. Hi, good morning. Please introduce yourself. How do you, as the vice chairman at the Korea Chamber of Business in the South and Middle Vietnam? Uh, as a head of external relationship um, committee in Korean Chamber in Vietnam, I represent Korean invest companies' interest to relevant authority in Vietnam. Uh, when Korean enterprise meets some difficulties, Korean Chamber of Ho Cham uh, arranged the meeting and I attend the meeting and deliver uh, our request to relevant authorities. Perfect. My major was, yeah, my major was Vietnam study in university, uh, more than 17 year experience working in Vietnam. I do the investment advisor works yeah, for the Korean investor mainly. Sometimes I also should do a, a speech and then provide a matching service to the Vietnamese businessmen uh, who want to export their product to Korean market. You must be the ultimate advisor for a lot of South Korean businesses in Vietnam at the moment. Yeah, yeah. More that, than... Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, please. Yeah, more than 3,000 uh, Korean enterprises uh, do the business in Vietnam, yeah. That's crazy that 3,000 already, and that number, I'm sure, is expected to go up in the near future. I think uh, uh, more and more, uh, more Korean businessmen will enter to Vietnam, yeah. Right, lots of opportunities in that Southeast Asian country. Then how do you think Korean businesses in that country over there are doing in terms of their uh, global presence and also competitiveness? Let's talk about that. Uh, since year 2007, uh, WTO commitment has been effective. The bigger scale of uh, foreign investment rushed in Vietnam, mm -hmm. not only manufacturing field, uh, but also retail focused business. Many Korean enterprises in Vietnam achieved the highest performance in the world. Uh, to the young, talented Vietnamese uh, people, Korean company, Korean invested companies have been the most attractive working place. 
Due to COVID-19 and global recessions, a small and medium-sized Korean businessmen should endure a severe time. I think uh, we Korean uh, will overcome it too. Right. A lot of sectors, including manufacturing, are areas that South Korean investors and also workers can go and look for new opportunities in, in Vietnam. Yes, uh, Vietnam is a very attractive nation uh, to Korean investor. Yeah. Right. Then also as a businessman yourself or uh, people around you, what difficulties and hurdles have you faced or heard in Vietnam? I mean, what challenges have you heard from your fellow business people over there? Mm. Uh, when doing business, there are many things we have to contact to Vietnamese government or local mm -hmm. uh, governor. Uh, licensing and taxation issues are typical. Uh, but I would like to say uh, there are some lack of consistency in legal regulation in this process. It's often confusing because the uh, application of regulation differs depending on the reason or a person in charge. Uh, in addition, there are difficulties in implementation because it usually takes uh, quite a long time. Uh, also, there are issues of work permit uh, for the uh, young Koreans. In order for foreign uh, direct investment, to proceed business in Vietnam, foreign workers uh, work in Vietnam is an essential factor, but it is uh, regret regrettable that there are some difficult documents uh, for obtaining the work permit, and which is uh, the, a kind of obstacle to uh, foreign direct investment. I think we need to uh, resolve this issue first. Right, because getting registered is the first thing to do for uh, not only just foreign businessmen, but overall there. But I'm sure regulations uh, do vary in different regions in Vietnam then? Uh, it's quite uh, uh, difficult to uh, answer about the question, but uh, uh, foreign workers after a globalization, mm -hmm. especially Korean young people who are now looking for the job in Vietnam, uh, they have some difficulties. I see. I'm sure uh, there should be ways to make that uh, confusing and complicated regulations and processes more, uh, I guess, easier and more accessible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, young people require uh, three more experience in overseas uh, company mm -hmm. uh, to get the uh, work permit in Vietnam. Uh, it's a very difficult document to submit it. Right. Hopefully, easier regulations will bring in uh, more uh, not more, but younger workers who are more enthusiastic and passionate to work overseas, not just in Vietnam, but overall. Yes, it's right. Uh, Korean young people, yeah, they have full of power, I think. Right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your invitation. Thank you. Netflix co-CEO Ted Sandros praised South Korea for proving the company's unwavering belief that great stories can come from anywhere and captivate audiences worldwide. Speaking at a media event in Seoul on Thursday, he said Netflix has invested in original, authentic local stories in over 50 countries since its launch, global launch in 2016, adding that 60% of Netflix subscribers have watched at least one Korean title. He also said the global viewership of Korean content went up sixfold in the last four years, citing the strength of its storytelling power. Meanwhile, Netflix announced its policy of charging additional fees for accounts shared outside of families will be implemented in South Korea soon. Washington-Beijing relations appear to be rocky yet again after U.S. President Joe Biden called Chinese President Xi Jinping a dictator. Now, Biden played it down, saying the comment has not undermined the two countries' relations. Shin Sebyeok reports. U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday downplayed the impact of his recent comments comparing Chinese President Xi Jinping to a dictator. He said at a news conference that calling Xi a dictator did not undermine Washington's relationship with Beijing. 
I expect to be meeting with President Xi sometime in the future, in the near term, and uh, I don't think it's had any real consequence. He also suggested that he would not tone down his rhetoric on China in the future. Biden's comments on Thursday followed Chinese ambassador to the U.S. Xie Fang warned of consequences if Washington isn't to take any immediate and earnest actions. Earlier in the day, Fang made strong protests to senior White House and State Department officials. The Chinese embassy called Biden's earlier comments a smear, which seriously contradicts basic facts and undermines mutual trust. Speaking at a campaign fundraiser in California on Tuesday, Biden equated Xi to a dictator and claimed that Xi was embarrassed when the Chinese balloon was blown off course without his knowledge. It prompted a fierce backlash from Beijing. They're an open political provocation. China is strongly dissatisfied with and firmly opposed to this. Biden's dictator remark also came only days after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made his visit to China, where he said the two countries had made progress towards getting their relations back on track. However, now given the Chinese embassy is describing the nature and impact of Biden's comment as very negative, this could add more tension to Washington-Beijing relations and could undermine the progress made during Blinken's trip. Xin Zhebiang, Adirang News. The latest on the Titan submersible, the U.S. Coast Guard has recovered debris from the vessel, which leads them to believe all five passengers on board have died. Ian Jin has the details. A deep-sea submersible operated by the U.S.-based company Ocean Gate Expeditions launched around 6 a.m. Sunday, and when it failed to return on schedule, was reported overdue later Sunday afternoon. The sub carrying five people was on its way to where the famous Titanic sank more than a century ago. A search and rescue operation had pinned hopes on the vessel's 96-hour supply of oxygen. On Thursday, however, the U.S. Coast Guard said it had uncovered a debris field within the search area of the missing sub, wiping away the silver of hope that remained for finding the five men. Rear Admiral John Mauger of the 1st Coast Guard District said during a news conference that the debris field was consistent with the catastrophic implosion of the vehicle and that the families of those on board had been notified. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. Rear Admiral Mauger also told reporters that a robotic diving device deployed from a Canadian ship discovered the debris field on the seabed some 488 meters from the bow of the Titanic, four kilometers beneath the surface, in a remote corner of the North Atlantic. The five passengers aboard the Titan were the company's founder and chief executive officer, Stockton Rush, who was piloting the sub, along with British billionaire and explorer Hamish Harding, Pakistani-born businessman Shahzada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman, and French oceanographer and Titanic expert Paul-Henri Nargelet. The five-day multinational search for the vessel has come to an end, but the U.S. Coast Guard said it will continue searching near the Titanic for more clues about what happened to the Titan, and efforts will also continue to recover the sub and the remains of the five men who died. Ian Jin. Arirang News. Good morning, I'm Matthew Ashley, and we now turn over to stories from around the world. We begin in the UK. The Bank of England on Thursday announced a surprise rate hike of 50 basis points bringing the country's interest rate to 5%. Now, the BOE said it made the decision, as data suggested, that UK inflation could take more time to cool down. Now, according to figures released Wednesday, the UK's inflation rate is at 8.7%. The rate hike is the largest since February and means that the UK is seeing its highest borrowing costs level since April 2008. Now, the news comes as a shock to some economists who had predicted a 25 basis points increase. 
To Kiev, meanwhile, also saw its main interest rate hiked from 8.5% to 15%. The hike is lower than what was expected, but still marks a policy reversal from President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who had insisted on keeping interest rates low. Inflation in Turkey is currently running at nearly 40 percent. We turn over to Brazil. A trial is underway that could temporarily prevent former President Jair Bolsonaro from running for office again. Now, the trial started on Thursday at the Supreme Electoral Court in the capital, Brasilia. Bolsonaro did not show up in person. He faces charges of abuse of political power and misuse of public media. The charges were made over a July 2022 meeting between Bolsonaro and foreign diplomats while he was still president. There, he reportedly claimed that Brazil's electronic voting machines were prone to being hacked and vulnerable to fraud. Although not a criminal case, if found guilty, he could be barred from running for public office for up to eight years. Shifting our attention to Beijing, the Chinese capital on Thursday saw its hottest day ever recorded for the month of June. Local media reported that one of Beijing's main weather stations recorded a temperature of 41.4 degrees Celsius. Another smaller station in the northeast reached an even higher temperature of 41.8 degrees. The figures beat the previous high of 40.6 degrees, recorded on June 10, 1961. And it came close to the hottest temperature ever recorded in the city, which was 41.9 degrees on July 24, 1999. Beijing has since issued an orange alert, the second most severe weather warning on its four-tier system. Authorities say that temperatures could remain as high as 39 degrees, until Saturday. And finally, Hong Kong welcomed the return of its annual Dragon Boat Festival. Taking place on Thursday at Aberdeen, the festival was held as normal for the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic. 45 teams took part, racing distances of 250 and 500 meters. Now, depending on the boat, teams taking part in the festival ranged from 8 to 50 people. Teams are usually composed of a drummer, a helmsman and paddlers. Typically, a standard dragon boat in Hong Kong has enough space for 20 people. The festival is part of a broader celebration of the ancient Chinese boat sport, which dates back more than 2,000 years. Good morning. It will be hotter today. Seoul sees the highs going up about 5 degrees higher this afternoon, with Gwangju also going up to 5 degrees higher than season norms. And it will remain quite hot through the weekend. We started off the day under cloudy skies, but after lunch, it will get much sunnier with stronger UV rays in western parts of the country and Jeju Island. Meanwhile, Gangwon-do and Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces will see passing rain with scattered thunderstorms. Now, afternoon highs will be 2 to 7 degrees, higher than yesterday in most parts. Chuncheon sees a high of 30 degrees, Daejeon topping out at 32 this afternoon, but the air quality will be decent nationwide all day today. Now, this year's monsoon season is set to begin this weekend, starting from Jeju and the south coast on Sunday. Then, the monsoonal front will drop showers nationwide next Monday. Monsoon rain that's forecast to drop heavily on Jeju looks to continue into next Wednesday before a short break. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions.
That's all we have for this Friday morning. We thank you for watching. You there, Arirang.